Hey guys, I'm David with Yellowhammer Woodcrafts. We got some crazy builds going on in the shop right now. Looks like a maze in here. These are slanted arches, and one of my clients, an event coordinator, asked me to build these for one of her parties. And she saw these on Instagram and sent me the Instagram. And I came up with my own way to build them. And if you stick around, I'll show you how I did it. And we'll have plans on these coming in a few weeks. The way these are set up is this middle one. The square arch goes in the center, and then these two are mirrored of each other, and they go on the left and the right, and they cross over in the front here just a little bit, and you wrap balloons around them or whatever kind of decorations you want, and then people can stand in the center of the square arch and take pictures, and it's good for parties and weddings and things like that. So they are made to come apart, and this is what they look like with all of them apart, there should be nine pillars and they all uh, attach to each other to build what you just saw. If you buy the plans, you'll see that I'm using half inch sanded ply and one quarter inch sanded ply. I did that because it's really hard to shoot brad nails into quarter inch. So the top and the bottom are half inch plywood and the sides are one quarter. I did that to save money because if you buy a half inch for all of the box, it's going to cost you more. The way I came up with to make these stronger and stable, since I'm using quarter inch plywood on the sides, is just to cut some square half inch plywood and put them in there like that. And once you put the top on and glue it, you're good. I don't know if you can tell by the video, but this is like James King level glue up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go look up. Uh, King's fine woodworking. He uses more glue than anyone I've ever seen, but you need to use glue on all the edges of these so that they, you know, stay square and strong. And if your client drops them, they don't bust open. The bases for these are just um, a little bit bigger than the bottom, just to stabilize it and keep it from falling over. All I do is put a little glue on it, and then put four screws in each corner. And that's good enough to hold it on. This just keeps it uh, basically from sliding out from under itself when you put it at a slanted, at a slant. And then I wanted to show this part because I messed up and pay close attention to which way you put the piece that connects the tops on because there's two holes in them that you screw your bolts into the T nuts to hold the top on. And if you put it going the wrong way, you're going to be doing what I'm doing right now and switching it around. So I didn't notice this until it was after I built it and set it up and it wasn't working. So you see me turning it around now. And this is what I mean with the holes being in it. So if you turn that the wrong way, it's not going to work. This is the way that I'm attaching the tops. So I have a T nut in the top piece right here, two T nuts, and then these bolts just screw through the holes. The best way to line these up is to put them up there and use some clamps to hold everything straight while you're doing it. And you drill the holes in these first, and then when you put your top on, you line it up and use your drill to put through the hole and mark it with your drill with your drill bit. And then you'll know exactly where to screw the holes in this one. one extra thing that I'm going to do that I haven't got yet. I'm going to put some latches on the back here and on the side that you don't see when you're doing pictures and stuff. So if this was your front then the latch would be on the other side, that way, when you put these together, you can come around, latch it down and latch it down here just to keep them straighter. And then you don't have this gap like that and everything stays secure. I haven't got the latches yet, but I am going to add those. So just a couple of things to note that I learned by building these the first time. Um, I didn't charge enough because it does take a lot of plywood. I think it ended up being eight sheets total. I want to say there was five sheets of quarter inch plywood and maybe four sheets of half inch, so nine sheets actually total. Um, 
that was over $300 just by itself or right around there and one gallon of paint it did take almost the whole gallon of paint um, you got to have 12 t-nuts 12 bolts and almost a whole bottle of glue I think I filled my glue bot up twice so it does take a lot of glue and about a half a pack of brad nails so in all I think I had about 350 maybe in material uh, I would suggest selling these for around seven or eight hundred dollars because they do take a lot of time I think total I had maybe 12 hours in them you could build them a lot faster if you have plans so when the plans come out I would suggest getting the plans because without plans it just takes a while and you know you got to figure all this stuff out on your own one thing to add about painting uh, I would suggest painting these with a roller I used a nine inch roller it made it pretty easy uh, if you use a sprayer it's just going to be a lot of overspray and it's going to be harder to cover the nail holes I don't know if you noticed in the video but I didn't caulk the nail holes because of what these are I mean they're going to be wrapped in balloons mostly so you're not going to see the nail holes anyway so I really wouldn't waste time caulking all these nail holes but if you use a roller you put a lot of paint in your roller you can cover the nail holes with the roller so that's what I did to save time another tip for painting uh, if you noticed in one of the shots that I took of all the sides taken apart the way I painted these I took uh, two 16 foot 2 by 4s and laid them across two um, saw horses and then as I painted one I moved it to the back and then put another one on the two 2x4s two and painted the next one and kept going down the line like that that way it keeps them off the ground and you can paint uh, three sides and then after those three sides dry you can turn it and paint the last side I did put two coats on them so you know that's that's a tip that may help you paint them a little bit faster I think I had about two hours total in paint and the last tip that may help you is just make sure when you're building the left and the right ones that are slanted that you build them mirrored of each other because if you um, angle them the same way then you're going to have two that go this way or two that go that way and you don't want that you want one going down and the other one going down into each other like this so if you build if you build them the same they're not going to uh, mirror each other and they're not going to be slanted towards each other well that's going to be it for this one hope you liked it hope it helps you build these and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment. Tell me what you think of these arch walls. Are they crazy? Are they cool? Let me know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.